this video, we're going to talk about the all-in-one loan and its pros and its cons. It's not the loan for everybody. It is certainly the most efficient loan for some people. So if you're interested in the all-in-one loan, you're in the right spot. Yeah, of course. Uh, so my name is Dave Herbst, and I'm our vice president of our all-in-one loan finance uh, ex uh, expansion team, business development. And I oversee uh, exactly that, the expansion of the all-in-one loan mortgage product for the company. It's not a new product for us. Um, but that means just sales training, uh, marketing, marketing. Uh, you know, doing a lot of things like this to help, uh, you know, create awareness out there in the marketplace that this loan exists and it's good for people and just helping people identify opportunities. Please, first of all, let's do a little overview of the all-in-one loan for those people that are not familiar with it. Exactly what is all the all-in-one loan and how does it work to save people lots of interest and potentially lots of money? Yeah, um, so the all-in-one loan is actually a pretty simple concept. It's technically a type of offset mortgage. Um, that what that means is that it has um, the ability to help offset mortgage principal and reduce the total amount of interest that is paid on the financing when you have to finance a property. The way this works is that it combines a first lien position home equity line of credit. That's what the all-in-one loan is. That's the financing side of it. So it's a 30-year draw, open-ended line of credit. Uh, but it comes combined with a fully transactional checking account, FDIC insured, secured checking account coupled with the mortgage. So what this helps a borrower do, whether you're home buying or you are interested in potentially looking at a mortgage refinance through this loan, it really empowers a consumer to use their idle money. Now, idle money may be money you have in your checking account right now or money you have in a savings account right now. Either way, any idle dollars you have on a daily basis are leveraged automatically using the all-in-one loan to help reduce mortgage principal on a daily basis, which reduces monthly interest and total interest payments. So it's purely designed to help shrink or eliminate mortgage interest and the mortgage debt more rapidly, but do it more comfortably. It keeps you liquid while you do it. So for any, anybody interested in building wealth faster and just paying less uh, interest, it's a phenomenal product. Got it. Okay. So Dave, there is a, uh... There are two components I heard you talk about. One is the line of credit, and the second one is the checking account. Mm -hmm. They are directly linked together. And it, how is it the process that that works that it actually saves people money? What's the actual process that sure. you go through there? Yeah, it's real simple. It's actually, we like to use the phrase, set it and forget it. Uh, it it's, a, it's simply a checking account. So the engagement is through the checking account. Uh, and so we all have one. We all know how to use them. Uh, typically, most of our income drives through a primary uh, checking account. So the uh, alternative here using this one is that when your money hits the checking account, it is automatically swept from the checking facility over into the HELOC paying down your mortgage principal. It does that for you automatically. So for instance, if we were, if we owed a balance today of $100,000, but today was payday and we uh, direct deposited our payroll check, maybe it's $5,000, that $5,000 payroll check would hit our all-in-one loan checking account today, and then it would automatically be swept today at the end of the day over into the HELOC, paying it down by $5,000. So your mortgage principal, when you wake up tomorrow morning, would only be $95,000 because your paycheck went into it. It's a really gratifying feeling. The interest benefit or savings comes after. It comes with the way it computes interest on a daily basis. After any deposits or withdrawals, the interest is then calculated. So it's simple interest based on the new principal balance. So in, the, in our case, in our example, $95,000 after our deposit uh, times the interest rate divided by 365 uh, gives us our per diem interest cost. Now that's not charged to you daily, John. It's just simply calculating nightly, recasting automatically every night after any deposits or withdrawals according to that outstanding principal balance that you owe. So it puts the consumer in a lot more control of their interest cost and total control of their principal balance on a daily basis. So what I hear you saying, Dave, is that when you make a deposit into the bank account, it first applies to principal and then interest is calculated. This is the only loan I know, guys, where you can make a payment that goes to principal first and interest is calculated second. Is that how that works, Dave? Yeah, well said, well said, absolutely. It's also the only loan that I know of out there today that allows you 30 years worth of access to your home's equity dollars freely to use. Now that's, that's an important feature. Uh, we market this loan as a deleveraging tool. It's a financial tool to help you shrink your total expense and interest 
get out of debt faster, build wealth and property sooner, um, but do it flexibly. And that's the, that's what empowers customers to be able to use it so easily and comfortably. It's kind of a really kind of a security blanket because of that design. Got it. Okay. We're going to move forward now with some pros and cons when we've heard, we've done some of these loans guys. Um, They're phenomenal for the right person, but maybe not all people. And you're going to find that out as Dave and Aaron and I chat about this. First of all, Dave, Aaron, why does CMG choose to lo- use a loan, offer a loan like this that saves the client potentially so much interest over the life of the loan? You know, if you think about it, uh, the average customer that gets a, a traditional mortgage today, John, as you know, in the business, uh, we tend to recycle that debt, pay it off and get another one, right? About every five to seven years, historically speaking. So okay. think about the impact of that at the, at the bank level, the lender level. We, we attract a client, we spend so much money trying to attract that and acquire that customer's business. And then we apply a lot more resources trying to retain their business so they don't go elsewhere in five or seven years when rates dip or they have a need for cash and they're out of their home. Uh, but that's the standard, that's the cycle. We tend to lose customers, even if we make them a 30 year fixed mortgage, we tend to lose that customer in about five to seven years anyway. So what if we change that paradigm completely? What if we are now creating a mortgage vehicle that not only supplies them the financing they need for their property today, but also has all these built in, uh, you know, future borrowing need and flexibility already built into it. So there is no reason for that customer to go elsewhere in five or seven years and recycle the debt. The tool they got five or seven years ago supplies them with all the flexibility and control and access to cash that they actually need. So we lose clients less on this loan and it helps them pay off faster. The average customer pays off in about nine years on this loan, nine to 11 years. So what if we retained a customer for nine or 11 years versus losing them in five years, like a traditional mortgage? So at the end of the day, it's about creating a sticky relationship and something really surprisingly or surprising happens when you innovate and put the customer first. And that's what this is. Yeah. Well put guys, both yeah. of you. Thanks. That, that makes great sense. Um, I'm going to interject here. Average client is, is nine years. Dave just mentioned there. We have a couple that applied for and moved forward with this loan that this is the short version of a long series of conversations with them and their financial planner and all that. They had applied with a, for a 15 year fix with us because they wanted to pay off all their debts as quick as can. They thought that was a great loan. Given their situation, the simulator that we're going to talk about in a little bit here show that they were potentially going to pay off their loan with the all in one loan in three and a half years, which was phenomenal. Their financial planner on the second call said, you know what, that's such an amazing loan. I think I might have to look at that on my house. So for the right person, it can be very beneficial. Yeah. As Dave and Aaron are talking about. Yeah. That, that's amazing. That's amazing results. Uh, it was amazing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about cons. I mean, this is a variable rate loan because it's a line of credit. Am I correct mm-hmm. on that? Yeah, you are. You are. You know, the the trade the tra- the the trade off or the downside of, of fixing in your rate um, is that your payment number one your payment doesn't change. Now we may we may view that as a benefit, right? Most of us do just naturally kind of program to think that that's a real advantage. But why can't you have a loan that reduces your payment for you automatically? Um, why do you need to lock in that payment or lock in that rate to, to get something that benefits you financially speaking? Uh, this is not a fixed rate. So that downside to fixed rate mortgages doesn't exist in this loan. And instead it uses uh, a monthly variable index called the LIBOR, the one month LIBOR index and uh, stands for London Interbanking Offered Rate. And, uh, and it's at about 2. 2.0, 2.1% today. So yeah, it's a variable rate mortgage, not a fixed rate. I like to tell people it's not your great, great grandparents fixed rate mortgage. <laughs> well, okay, so what happens when rates increase, guys, over time? Yeah. How does that impact this loan? Yeah, yeah. Well, your, your rate may increase on this and, and also lower as it is today. That's the great benefit of it. Um, but your best hedge is by using your income dollars through the loan, right? Your income, your, your idle cash on a daily basis to drive down mortgage principal uh, more rapidly. And that has a, a, actually a larger impact, a bigger benefit uh, in reducing your total cost, your interest expense, than interest rate alone. I like to tell people, you know, low interest rate doesn't mean low amounts of interest. Um, And as a matter of importance, when you borrow money, as with investing money, um, the focus should be on the amount of interest you pay versus your actual interest rate, right? That's probably more important. And you can achieve less interest payments, lower interest payments, um, even if the rate were to, to adjust up and down. 
Okay, great. Is there a cap on the interest rate date? There is, yeah. There's a lifetime cap that's set when you close the loan. It's, uh, it's set at 6% over your initial note rate. So initial note rates range today in the neighborhood of about in the mid fours on up uh, plus 6% would be your lifetime cap. So it's a pretty low lifetime cap for a line of credit, especially a 30 year line of credit. Okay. So what's the fully indexed rate on this particular loan for a borrower typically right now? Yeah. So we offer margins, uh, a series of margins that a borrower can choose from and that defines their closing costs, right? Their closing fees up front, just like any other mortgage where you can buy it down and pay discount points or actually, maybe choose a little bit higher interest rate so you can get some credit back to, to help with closing costs. So the full range of margins to choose from. The margin is added to the LIBOR index to, to provide a fully indexed rate. And so our margins start at 2.5%. So 2.5% plus the 2.1% LIBOR today. So you're at about 4.5, 4.6% right. fully indexed out. And then there's some higher options too that can help reduce the, the closing costs. Okay, good. All right, so this is all well and good, but why can't I just take a regular home equity line of credit from a bank and do the same thing? Yeah, a very popular common question we get. Um, you know, I, I, without giving you a too long-winded of an answer, which I'm known for, um, I will, uh, I will, I will say this. <laughs> I'll say this, that, um, you know, A, there's a, there's a, it's a manual cumbersome process probably involved with using two different mortgage instruments, right? That neither of them are really intended to help deleverage debt, uh, um, you know, easily. Number two, the way interest is computed on traditional HELOC products is not the same as the all-in-one line of credit. Where this is recasting nightly, you're picking up the daily benefit of your money, the time value of your money on a daily basis. Most HELOCs don't compute interest uh, based on your end of day balance. They'll compute interest maybe on a daily average or even a monthly average most commonly. And that may seem like nickels or quarters at first, but uh, that can add up to dollars and thousands of dollars in savings or added costs that's unnecessary. So this is designed to create the, the most minimal interest payment that you can achieve uh, on a monthly basis because of the way the interest is computed. I would say thirdly and lastly, uh, this has an integrated checking account in it. It's built into it. It pays off the primary mortgage, which is your largest expense in life, gets that out of the way and puts in place a tool that allows you to leverage your, you know, freely leverage your income dollars and pay your bills directly out of. So those are kind of the top three reasons why this is so different. Um, explain, you mentioned something a little earlier that this was a 30 year line of credit. That's interesting. Um, what's a normal line of credit? How long do they have to last for the line of credit? And can you explain? Comment on the differences and compare there, please, between those two. Yeah, absolutely. Most lines of credit, as you know, are uh, provide a 10-year draw, so access to home equity dollars only for 10 years, and then it turns into either um, a balloon payment might be due, or but in most cases, a fully amortized um, payment due over the next 15 years or even 20 years there, thereafter. So this loan is not that. This loan is a 30-year draw instrument, 30-year term mortgage. Um, and that provides 30 years worth of draw timing, freedom to use it over the 30 years. That's one of the biggest differences between this and a traditional line of credit. Uh, traditional lines of credit are just a temporary tool to help leverage equity dollars. This helps you leverage equity dollars as you need it. It also helps you deleverage uh, as you want to, right? So it's designed to do both. Who's a loan not for? Who would it not necessarily benefit? Why not do a bi-monthly mortgage? Well, um, my answer to that is this, that um, number one, uh, it's, it's good for people that are cash flow positive, right? So people that aren't overspending, not spending more than they actually make or earn, right, on an annualized basis. So that's number one, cash flow positive people, people that are living within their means um, and are just, you know, serious about their finances and are pretty aware that they shouldn't be overspending or spending more than they make. It's, um, it can harm those people that do, uh, the, the folks that live really on the cusp of paycheck to paycheck, they, they get close to zeroing out their checking account on a, on a just standard monthly basis. Uh, you know, that's really ultimately what a 30 year loan was 30 year fix and a forward amortizing fixed rate mortgage pay, uh, uh, instrument was designed for back in 1934 people that were barely making it. So those products still exist and they're probably suitable for that client base. This one's suitable for folks that are cash flow positive and uh, really want to take more control of their, their debt. Um, and their home's worth, their value, right, in their, in their real estate. Um, 
And uh, what's different about it than a biweekly? You know, here's the here's one thing I want to step back and just articulate really quickly. Your your biggest asset in life is the money you earn, right? As a as a worker, right? Think about the volume of money that you earn over time in your adult life, from the from the moment you started working and entered the labor force to 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 present day. Uh, for most of us, it's a lot of money that you could probably add up in your mind pretty quickly, right? Just annualize the money that you've made over time, and it's a lot. Oh, wow. Well, the bulk of those funds flow through this one facility, this one financial instrument we all use called a checking account, right? Well, what if that checking account leveraged 100% of those funds automatically for you, leveraging against your biggest expense in life, which is your mortgage? A bike weekly doesn't do that. No other product does that. Um, it uses your biggest asset in life to help benefit you and reduce and shrink the size aggressively of your largest expense in life automatically and naturally for you. Sending an extra payment away in a bi-weekly payment program may still be suitable for a lot of homeowners out there. It's just not as powerful. I mean, that's really the bottom line. And you know, guys, I want to add to what Dave said that, yeah, absolutely. We've done bi-weekly programs with some of our mm -hmm. clients, especially in the past. Once you have a fixed rate mortgage and you do a biweekly or maybe even more aggressive than that and you pay that mortgage down, it's very difficult to get out those dollars again because you yep. just pay the mortgage down and they're not accessible. With this loan and a regular HELOC even, and you pay it down and you need those funds for some purpose and a lot of our investors or a lot of our clients are investors and you need it sometimes for rehab or whatever, they're instantly available to you at no additional cost. You don't have to refinance or anything like that to get at them. Yeah. This is a significant thing with this loan. Yeah, you're writing a check. It's your money. It's there. It's all. It, this thing never fails you. Your money's always there. You can wire it. You could write a check. You can swipe your ATM debit Visa card. Your cash is uh, secure, but it's always there for you. All right. And before we leave the topic of who it's not for, I do want to let you know that CMG has a, a website which has a simulator on it so you can test drive this mortgage before you ever even make application for the loan. You can pop on there and you can put in your depositories going through your bank account, how much and when they go through, it's very, very refined, so you can do that. And also your expenditures that come out of that bank account, and it'll give you an analysis of that and tell you how quickly you're probably gonna pay that loan off over time. And you can play with that there to see if you need some margin in there or whatever, and if you are the right person or potentially this loan is not the right loan for you, yeah. which is really, really helpful. And know as well, John, I think uh, we, we, I skipped over this. We also offer a three-year fixed version and a five-year fixed version oh, on the yeah. loan. So that also helps a lot of people. And the simulator has all that built into it. So you could really play around with whether or not locking in a rate um, is as beneficial as leaving it adjustable. Uh, and it simulates in for, uh, with a nice uh, programmed forecast of uh, both environments, rates stabilized and rates moving up. Uh, so you can actually see the power of your cash and how much more effective that is in reducing your debt and your expense uh, than interest rate alone is. All right. And so, Dave Aaron, right, right candidate, right and wrong candidate. Who is this loan for in terms of owner-occupied second home investors? Can you do them all yeah. or what? Yeah, all, all occupancy types. Um, all three. Uh, this is, we, we released it for investment property owners uh, last November, I believe. And I tell you, it's about a third of our business now. It's growing. It just seems to be that space of real estate investors that, that you know, would like to grow the wealth in their properties faster are really gravitate towards a loan like this. So imagine cash flowing your rental income directly into the property itself through the mortgage. You're going to, in which you said earlier, John, perfectly, this is a principal paid first mortgage. So your rents go directly to principal the day they're paid, right? And the only thing left to pay after that is just the interest once the month ends uh, out of the account. So you build, you build wealth faster in your investment properties. And it's just, it's really popular. Uh, it's growing and growing and growing in that space. All right. And let's speak to the commission type, income wage earner, um, income earner, or maybe the self-employed earner that has potentially gaps of time where they don't have a lot of income and then a large amount of income comes in occasionally here. Does it work for that client as well? It does. Yeah. All the above. Um, so uh, yes, John, absolutely. It's uh, it's available for all those income uh, earn, earning types. So commissioned 
uh, employees, self-employed. Uh, I'd say about 30% of our of what we see come in are self-employed borrowers. And we actually see a lot of uh, lar large, su larger sums of capital coming in. So it tells us it's probably business, small business capital moving in and out of the account. So you're using you know, your business flow of money to, to benefit personally. Um, and uh, passive income earners as well. We have, a, we have a feature in the program that also allows for um, us to leverage assets, not pledging them, but actually just creating a, an a, uh, income figure. Um, if you had to live off your assets over a 10 year period, what would that dollar figure look like? So it's called asset depletion and that helps a lot of passive income earners and, uh, and self-employed folks um, benefit from all in one loan financing, even though they may have a harder time qualifying. They have great assets, but they're just not a lot of documented income, right? Um, which makes it a little bit harder on a traditional mortgage. Uh, we still think this loan is very suitable for those clients. So a lot of, a lot of flexibility there. Oh, so Dave, this is new to me. Are you telling me that we can take someone who has a large liquid asset and use the potential income from that asset as qualifying income for that? Yeah, we're, we're exactly right. Um, I'll give you a little bit more detail. You're basically taking um, about 70%. We take 70% of the, the, the combined value of the assets um, add that to any cash, so 100% value of cash they may, they may have. And those assets could be retirement accounts, stocks, bonds. Uh, we'll take that combined value and deplete it. We'll just divide it by 120 months. And that's your income figure we'll put into the ratio. If you're of retirement age, so 62 or older, we take 100% of the value of combined assets, divide by 120. And that gives us an income figure we're going to put on the application and help you ratio. Well, that's awesome. That really mm -hmm. opens up a lot of borrowers. It does. Yeah. yeah. And they don't have to pledge that asset to nope. for the loan or anything. It's just no, they're not liquidated. It's just that they're, they keep them where they're at. Uh, they're just documented and they've done a good job of, uh, you know, saving or acquiring, you know, assets and uh, we'll just use them to help them qualify. All right. One other part of Keith's question before we move on here. Um, does CMG have a profile of an ideal borrower from from data from your existing mortgage people now that are yeah possible? yeah you know what it all really comes down to is uh again cash flow uh you know i i could i could fill an hour telling you you know the the profile of the customer um the profile of the customer are things like 72 percent loan to value typically so they've got some equity in their home more than just a 10 percent or whatnot um we, we do a lot of refinances, more refinances than we do purchases on this loan. Uh, so people that are existing homeowners with an existing mortgage tend to gravitate towards, you know, they're looking for a cut in line, if you will, you know, a, a, way, to, a way to save and have an easier time saving so they can better prepare for their, their future. Um, average age is close to 50. Um, you know, it's your Gen X or baby boomer typically, and those are the people that owe most of the debt. But it, it's cash flow, 10% uh, and more uh, cash flow. So, uh, anybody that does not need to spend more than 90% of their income on a monthly basis, including their current mortgage expense, uh, those tend to be really good customers or really okay. good potential customers. Yeah. Okay. Is that 10% of their, are you looking at net income? Is that what Net income, saying? disposable income. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Well, that's helpful. Dave. Okay. Kisa, remember, she wanted to know the max rate, even when interest rates rise. What, right. you describe that again for us, please, Dave. Yeah. So uh, the lifetime cap is set uh, during the month that you close your loan. So let's just, uh, let's just take an example. Let's say that we were uh, putting a 2.5% margin, locking that in this month, and today, today's value or this month's value of one month LIBOR is 2.1%. So you would, your fully indexed rate would be 2.1 plus 2.5, giving us 2.6, right? I'm sorry, 4.6. So 4.6 would be your initial note rate. Um, your lifetime cap is set at 6% over that initial note rate. So that would mean it would be a 10.6% lifetime maximum rate. It's your ceiling on this loan. Now consider for a second what would happen in order for your rate to reach that level. The LIBOR index tracks nearly identically with the Fed funds rate. And we know which way the Fed funds uh, rate has been moving downward. We've been in a kind of a, a, a reducing interest rate environment since February, um, and the Fed keeps talking about additional reductions. LIBOR moves with that. It, things would have to change. We'd have to be in a hyperinflationary environment. Not, I don't have a crystal ball. That may happen in the future. But the Fed would probably need to increase uh, the overnight Fed funds rate probably upwards around 7.5 or even 8% 
right, maybe even further, closer to 9% for your all-in-one loan to ever hit that ceiling. Uh, that's the catastrophe we, we would have to live in you know, economically uh, in order for us to reach that ceiling. So it may seem high, but it's actually not. For lines of credit, it's a really low lifetime cap. And right. you could probably attest to that, John. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's true. How about a minimum rate? Does, it, does the one loan have that name? does yeah 3.75 is our floor so if the fed moves the overnight rate to zero and LIBOR follows suit uh we we don't pay less than 3.75 it's just kind of at the point where it doesn't make much sense uh you know to to uh for our bank partners to to service the loan and, and buy it and hold it on their balance sheet so 3.75 is the is the uh the floor got it and the last part of her question are there surrender penalties if you want out before 30 years nope well, None at all. None at all. You can you can refinance out of it any time. You can pay it to zero as fast as you want to. Uh, keep it open. There's no you know no penalty for that whatsoever. And when and most of our customers do that, they'll pay it down and they'll keep it open. And it's a flexible credit facility. Why not? Um, but no, no penalties, no restrictions. You're you're in complete control. Dave, I think we should clarify too this uh, thirty year line of credit. Do you have the maximum line of credit for thirty years, or how does that work? On no, for the. <laughs> For the 30 years, um, the first 10 years, the credit line that you're approved at stays the same. So you can pay down, you can draw back out up to that line. After 10 years, the available credit limit starts to reduce by one over 240 or the remaining 20 years, however you want to look at it. The payment structure stays the same where you pay principal first. We're still settling up on interest the following month. But that sliding scale allows the ability to not have a balloon payment, which for borrowers is a better situation to be in because typically you don't plan for that, which means you end up refinancing, which means you end up changing the trajectory of your financial goals. So it's a way to set it up for the borrowers to have payoff at the end of 30 years, but still have continual access to some equity dollars during that time. Yeah. Excellent. Well said. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, a couple more comments here. Um, how to access the simulator? Someone's asking me. I want to make it clear that um, Pacific One Mortgage Bay Equity brokers this loan to CMG. So we're your interface. We're the loan officer you're going to be dealing with. We're the processing unit, so on. So we can send you the simulator so you can test drive the loan yourself. It's CMG simulator that they've created. We're just your access to that. And we, you won't be calling Aaron or Dave at the end of this call to get the loan. That's not their their job responsibility here, that's ours, so you understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, Marshall wants to know, how long has this loan been around and are there any testimonials that people can access? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the loan's been around since 2005, so we're good 14 years into it. And uh, I'll, I'll, let me add to that, no delinquencies, no defaults, not a single yeah. borrower delinquency or default. Uh, it's just amazing. Not a single penny lost on this. It's performed well. Uh, there are customer testimonials um, we make available. Um, and through our marketing resource center, John, that you have access to, uh, some of that is available to you. Coincidentally, I was actually just up in your neighborhood in uh, Browns Point and Tacoma uh, two weeks ago uh, filming one of our latest. So we are initiating a, a new video uh, co collection of testimonials. And, uh, and so I was with a gentleman and his wife in Browns Point, and it was just phenomenal. This couple has been able to uh, pay off two properties. They sold one, used the cash proceeds, and bought their dream home that overlooks the Puget Sound there. Absolutely amazing um, on Brown's Point. And, uh, and they've just grown their, their wealth in real estate because of the all-in-one. They paid off three properties basically in seven years. Um, and wow. they're just, they're just, they're living high on life now and they're not super savvy they're great people, but they don't walk around knowing all the answers. They're just regular Joes and, and they work hard and, and, uh, it just happened to, you know, they happen to use this properly and it's benefited them. So testimonials like that are powerful and we have those available, uh, both in video and, and write and written, uh, testimonials as well. Excellent. And, you know, alluding to a previous question there, are there other ways to pay off your mortgage fast? Absolutely. There are. There are, and, and there may be other ways that are more beneficial for you. So you need to explore that yourself, guys. This is the only yeah. one I know that you put it on autopilot, as Dave described earlier. You don't change your budget. I think it makes you much more aware of your budget, so you may choose to change your budget mm -hmm. because you know that the more dollars you keep in your account, the faster you're paying off that mortgage. And it yeah. works very, very well for that kind of person without any change. I mean, you don't have yeah. to actively do anything other than watch your budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said.
Um, Cherie wants to know if you have an existing HELOC, can you use the all-in-one loan to refinance that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we have some added benefit to our features really. In, in the conventional mortgage world, it's a little bit more restrictive when you're paying off non-purchase money HELOCs and things like that. There's seasoning requirements involved. None of that exists on this loan. We can pay off a, an existing HELOC and, and maybe another primary mortgage, uh, consolidate that all into the all-in-one so you get a more powerful and effective tool. Dave, Aaron, what happens if my spending habits change? I get the loan, I'm kind of cruising along, all of a sudden something happens, my spending habits change. What happens then? Yeah, well, a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, I think that's one of the benefits. I think one of the benefits of this loan is that flexibility. It provides you the ability to maneuver, right, given your lifestyle changes or financial challenges that, it, that, you, that it, you, you, you know, kind of you've incurred. And you can manage through those periods of your life without having to really worry about your mortgage. It's, it's there for you. You have credit available through it. Uh, so if your spending habits change, um, your loan is there for you. You access home equity dollars as you need to pay for those additional expenses. Um, get back on your feet if it's a challenge. Um, or if it's an opportunity, you can use those dollars to invest with, right, um, wisely. Um, if, if uh, you know, but most certainly it changes the trajectory. It impacts your mortgage principal. So if your spending habits, you start overspending, you're spending more than you were uh, pr uh, prior to getting into the loan, uh, that'll obviously offset or delay the pay down. But you can use our interactive simulator. It's not just a tool to forecast in the beginning. Uh, our customers use the interactive tool constantly, ongoingly. I can tell you, I do for my household. My wife and I sit down pretty consistently and take a look at it. Um, we have growing children, and it's, it becomes more of a planning tool uh, that we can quickly assess doing things like remodeling or you know, putting more money away for um, college tuition costs, things like that. So it's always there for you. It'll change your trajectory but there's a tool that you can use to really help forecast and make those decisions. Okay, Dave, another question came in. Does CMG have the right to unilaterally reduce the amount of credit that's available for a client once they set it up? Yeah, in the case of, there's some protection involved, you know, of course, um, it's an open-ended credit instrument uh, providing you access over a pretty long period of time. Um, in, in the case of credit abuse or, you know, mismanagement, um, there you know, that's never happened, by the way. Uh, we've never frozen one of these. Um, it's not going to be modified or reduced simply because housing value has come down. That, that occurs on lines of credit when people have leveraged their equity dollars. So their debt level has come up while their housing value is coming down. Now that creates a bunch of problems for banks, which is why we've seen them swiftly modified in the past. But if you have a mortgage product that happens to be a line of credit, yes, but it's deleveraging your principal balance rapidly, then it reduces the risk to the bank. So this doesn't get modified or frozen because housing values may, may change. Uh, this is, you know, there's protections involved with credit abuse or mismanagement, sure. Um, if there's some, some signs of, uh, of that, then uh, a letter or a phone call would occur first, not just something, uh, not, not a blind modification or something. Guys, I think you've answered all the questions that are coming from the audience. So right. I thank you for that. I wanted to ask you a couple more things here. What have we not asked about this loan that you have seen? I mean, you've been in a little longer than we've offered it to our clients here. Yeah. What should people be asking about this loan? What should they understand about it that we haven't covered? You know, um, I think I, I think the, the biggest barrier in understanding and, and really kind of adoption uh, is just the issue of interest rates and how how interest rates truly impact your costs. Um, I, I, I would challenge anybody that's listening and watching this right now um, and maybe viewing this later uh, to just run through a quick exercise. Um, it's kind of fun. It's, uh, it's kind of shocking and eye-opening. But take your current loan or any other loan you're thinking about getting and do me a favor. Take the total amount of interest that you've committed yourself to, divide that into the total principal you borrowed originally, and you're going to come up with a percentage. And that percentage is really high. It's shockingly high. Typically, even with a really historically low rate, uh, that percentage is somewhere probably in the neighborhood of about 70%. That, that means that's the amount of interest you're paying relative to the amount of principal you borrowed. Uh, so in other words, you may have a 4% mortgage today, but you're paying 70% interest on the balance, right, on the principal balance over time. In other words, that's $7 in, uh, in interest for every $10 you need to borrow. That's not that great of a deal. Uh, 
And so I just, I, I, you know, to kind of help answer that question, I think an exercise for people to do is really, um, you really get to understand how interest rates impact costs. Um, rate matters least. What matters most is the balance. Who's in control of it? Where's it headed? How long are you going to be in debt for? Who's controlling all that? Is it you or is it the bank? Um, and, and that's just one thing I, I think that people should really kind of keep in mind as they think about this loan. Having access to equity dollars and all the flexibility and cool features, that's all, that's all great. But at the end of the day, um, this shifts the paradigm a bit away from the way we've been doing things to this, to this, uh, to understanding, uh, how rates and money work a little bit better. And, uh, you can use that knowledge to really benefit yourself. Excellent. Aaron, you want to add anything that we haven't chatted about? Uh, no, I think Dave definitely covered it. Um, just to, I think add on to what he just said, what I say a lot in my webinars, um, it's, it's not about the interest rate, it's the size of the debt that interest is calculated off of. It's just an easy tagline for you to keep in your mind. So when you're thinking of your finances, when you're going over looking at how much interest you're paying on your loan, if you do that exercise, just keep that in mind. It's not about interest rates, the size of the debt interest is calculated on. So I think those myths that borrowers believe in that, you know, if I have a low interest rate and I have a low monthly payment, then I'm getting a great deal. That's just really not the case when you break it down and you look at it. Excellent. Dave, by chance, or Aaron, you know that profile of the clients that you've, you've got from, that have got the CMG, uh, yeah. one loan. what percentage of the loan amount do they pay in interest? Do you know? Um, you mean uh, out of a traditional mortgage? Well, you had mentioned that if somebody gets a 30-year mortgage and they figure it out, they're going to pay 70% yeah. back in terms of interest. Yeah, it's about 72. It's about 72 is the average. Okay. Yeah. What, what so, about, do you have enough data for the all-in-one loan to know what's the average there? Well, it's reduced significantly. It's, it's every single household is a little bit different, but it shows you that percentage on the simulator. Um, but I can tell you this, that the, uh, let me give you a couple things to remember. One is that the, uh, the, the amount of, of cost that um, is saved in total, typically on a, on, uh, with the, for an all-in-one loan customer, I'm talking total costs. So the borrowing of principal plus the interest people pay right? Total price of your financed home. The reduction that the all-in-one loan provides on average is about 26%. So, so again, borrow $300,000 at 4% over 30 years, you're going to pay about $220,000 in interest on that. So now you've taken on a $520,000 debt, not just a $300,000 debt, $520,000 debt on a 30-year loan at 4%. Well, if you could cut 26% away of that, that's your money. That's money you have. You retain those dollars. It's free to use. Um, it's, you're in a better situation and you're not in debt for 30 years. You're probably out of debt in nine or 11 years. Um, so it's about 26% total savings. Um, that's an that's a interest savings reduction of tens of thousands of dollars on average. Awesome. Yeah. Guys, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. I oh, thank you, John. The audience know, guys, you're not going to call Dave. You're not going to call Aaron there. Their role in this is to help us. When I have questions, Aaron and Dave, who I call, right? Our loan officers will. There are gonna be a loan officer information on the screen here that you can reach out to. If you want to ask questions about this loan, if you wanna get a link to the simulator and try it on for size, if you wanna just compare it with other loan options that are there. That's what we're here for, kind of. It's not the loan for everyone, but no loan is. It's yeah. a great loan for the right client. You wanna make sure you're the right client. We really appreciate that. Well said. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you, John. You guys take care.